Hey folks, it's time, your frugal prepper. I wanted to just show this real quick. So I'm playing with my pressure transducer, seeing what I can see. And um, so this scope's a little goofy in that it doesn't zoom like a Pico would. So you can see I cut the top of my humps off in order to record this at a lower millivolt rating so I could really get a good picture of this. Now, you know, this is the air compression stroke, you know, this big hump here. And then what's this little bump here, and this bump, and this little bump, and this right here? So this is where a pressure transducer comes in handier than just a straight up compression gauge, because this is showing you all four cycles of the stroke. Um, so let me uh, zoom this out a little better. We'll change our time base, really get a, a pretty picture of this for you. So, so you could have an exhaust valve that's stuck uh, shut, and you'll still get a perfectly fine compression reading on a compression gauge. Um, you could have an exhaust valve that sticks shut two out of three times, and if you crank it 10 times on a compression gauge, you're gonna get a fine compression reading. You can't see those things, but you can see that with a pressure transducer. So here I've got this waveform zoomed in that I took with this pressure transducer. And so here we come off of our compression stroke. Now, here's what's going on. The way I heard this explained by somebody by Train by Tech's uh, channel on a live stream, think of it like a syringe and you've just kind of capped off the top where the needle would go and you're pressing that syringe up. Well, it compresses it all the way up, and that's where you're going to get your peak compression, right? But then it hasn't had an explosion at all, so it comes back down. Now, our cylinder isn't perfect. We have a little bit of leakage past the rings, and there's probably a little bit around the valve seats. They probably don't seal absolutely 100%. So guess what? When it gets back down to the bottom where it started, it's lost some air along the way. So it creates a little bit of a vacuum. All right, and so this drops down and starts to create a vacuum, and right here is the exhaust valve opening. I say valves because this engine has four valves per cylinder, okay? But this is the exhaust valve's opening, and then boom, right here is where the, you know, valves open, and now it's pressing out the exhaust gases with those valves open. It doesn't build much pressure, but it builds some. And then all of a sudden, the exhaust valve closes, the piston starts to come back down right here, and you have this little drop right here. This is your intake stroke. And this is going back into your compression stroke. The intake valve is closed right there, and you're starting into compression. And so this is what you can see on a transducer to know that the engine's actually working correctly. So relative compression really to me means a couple of things. Um, you could just be saying, are they close to each other? And this is where you usually take a voltage measurement of the battery and crank it, and you see if the voltage sag is pretty equal on each cylinder. That's a quick and dirty way to see if you got one cylinder that's low or bad. The other way is to do that with current, and you could do the same thing. Make sure the current draw is the same with each cylinder. But more often, you'll take a pressure transducer like this, you'll put that in, right? And you'll actually measure the compression on that one cylinder. And then you'll look at your current draw on that cylinder and see if the current draw is about the same on the other cylinders and know about what compression rating that they're at. And then if you have like a Pico with the auto software, it does the math for you and tells you, which is nice. Um, but this is what in-cylinder pressure transducer can tell you about what's going on in that cylinder. And so this gets even more advanced when you start to measure intake pressure and vacuum. Because you can see all four strokes at once. Which is where I'm heading is to eventually build that pressure transducer uh, to see that kind of thing. And that was what I learned in that Train by Text video. So that's what I'm working towards, but this is what I'm trying to learn to be able to see. Now, why do you want to see this, right? Why not just get a compression gauge and test it? Well, you know, I had to work on a uh, Hyundai Santa Fe with the V6 in it. I don't know, I think it's a 2.7 liter or something. 
you know, you got to go through three hours of work to get that freaking intake manifold out and that one adjoining bolt in the back just to get to the plugs. So this allows you to see what's going on in the engine and have an idea uh, based off of this one cylinder to see if you have compression to see if this looks like it's in time. You can test the easy to get to cylinders without necessarily having to tear into the back because if you see a timing issue on these other cylinders, then there's a camshaft out of whack. And so what's really nice is when you start doing it on the intake, you can see all the cylinders at once. And you can actually see if there's a timing issue or something else going on inside the engine. So just one step at a time, it's baby steps for me as I learn this. And on a Pico scope with a better Pico pressure transducer, this is even more apparent and easier to see. But I think this is good enough for my purposes if I need to get this type of a capture. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. The old hand tech scope and my homemade pressure transducer tonight. I did go pick up a new battery so this thing's turning over faster now and I'm getting better readings. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.